Okay, the wood is now done on these floats and the next thing is to do um, some detail painting on them. Now, the instructions are not all that clear um, when it comes to painting these. So we've, we've got clearly metal items on there, um, which they show as being maybe aluminium or steel or something like that, but they don't tell you what colour it is. They just depict it as a silvery colour in the instructions. So if I, if I pull the, instru the paint instructions out, you'll see what I mean. So they're, they're a bit naff. So you can see the tips, but it doesn't tell you what colour to do it. There's no no instruction at all. There is an instruction for these circles, which is to do them the same white as we've been doing for the struts, but I'm not convinced. I th I think these would perhaps be aluminium, and that's that's the, the route I'm going to go. Um, I'm, I'm going to paint them aluminium. I'm also, I think these are tread plates and I don't think they would be wood. So um, I'm going to assume that that central baton is wood and that these are designed to be walked on. So perhaps aluminium strips. Also underneath on the instructions, it shows it all as wood. But to be honest, I think these rubbing strips here would probably be aluminium also. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint them all in the aluminium and um, hopefully that will look like a nice contrast. Um, so we'll start by doing um, all these little uh, treads and things and then we'll move on to um, doing the little circles. So I'm using the uh, MIG aluminium that we've used largely throughout the build. Okay. Uh, we'll give that a bit of a, a mix there. Happy with that. Right, let's get cracking. So I've been looking at some uh, reference pictures, including some that are in the instructions as well, and it's clearly all dark. You can see the, the little raised circles really, really clearly, um, but these raised areas are dark. So I'm sort of going back on my sweeping bold statement about not following the instructions. I'm going to follow the instructions um, and we're even going to do the circles in the white as well. So that's my next job, painting in the white circles. So let's see how we get on with that.
I'm trying to achieve is some artificial shadow around all the raised areas. Gives you a gives you a feeling of um, depth around these raised parts, particularly these these white discs because actually they're very very low impressions. So being able to just make them pop out a little bit is quite important. Now, obviously these floats spend a lot of time in the water and when I looked at some of the period pictures, even though they're black and white, you get an impression that they're quite mucky on here. And I, I don't want them to be mucky particularly, but what I want to do is show that there's some form of waterline. So I'm thinking of doing a gloss varnish on the top to seal everything in and sort of stopping that part way down here, a couple of millimeters down perhaps, or, or maybe a bit more, three or four possibly. I'm not quite sure yet and give you the impression that um, there's a there's a water line. So I, I think that would look fairly good. Uh, what I might do is, is paint um, a satin line on first and then paint slightly above it a, a gloss line. So there's a bit of, so you can see there's sort of a different water lines, if, if that makes sense. Um, I think that would, that would look quite effective, at least in my mind, it'll look quite effective. I don't want to put a tide mark on um, per se, um, but at least give it a, a sort of feeling that this has actually been in water. It might just add a little bit of realism to the whole thing. It's quite a labor intensive process, this. Um, but uh, doing it as a pin wash gives me so much more control than splatting it on and wiping it off. So I would rather do it this way and spend the time on uh, doing it. And around these um, openings where we're gonna have um, struts, I'm just going around the edges and, and dabbing away at the edges to give a little bit of um, false shadow. Um, I think that'll just, well, I've already done it there. You can see it just darkens it a little bit. And I think that's also helpful. The other thing that's helpful about putting this um, uh, wash on um, is when we've done the oil brusher part of the, the woodwork, it's very difficult to get right into the edges of these ridges. So you can see there's little pale areas where the, the oil's not quite got in with the brush. Um, and putting this wash in just ties it all together um, and I can take the opportunity to darken those those little areas where we couldn't quite get in and you can see that that just ties it all in nicely then right I'm going to carry on with this um, and I'll get back to you when both of the floats are done. Don't forget to also do the underside because we've got this curve. So um, at least from there-ish onwards will be uh, visible at certain angles. So we want to make sure we put our shadow in. And again, it's also helping to tie in the colors where we've not been able to get in with the, with the sponge. using a slightly thicker brush on the underside. And it's really gonna make these runners pop. Thank you. 
There we go. We can see the difference in that already. So if I compare it with that one, you can see how um, it's giving us a little bit of variation in, in the colour shade in there. So, yeah, really happy with the, how that's going to turn out. When we look at the back end, it is worth doing a little bit on the back end too. We've got some shape here, which we can highlight. So we've got panel edge there. And some shadow here. And what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm just going to feather that in. So we just give that a moment to dry off a little bit. Then I'm uh, dipping my brush in a, a bit of white spirit. So I've got a, a little uh, flat brush here and I'm taking all the white spirit off. So I'm very, very lightly moist. And we can just blend that in. I'm hardly pressing on, I'm just lightly dragging it over. There we go. Okay, perhaps went a bit heavy on the top there, so if that's the case, we can just put some more back in. Nothing that's not retrievable. Um, we'll let that dry again and then I'll feather it in. Right. I'm going to carry on getting the underside of, of this done and then I've got the other float to do so um, you don't have to wait around while I get it all done so um, I'll get back to you when we're ready to move on. Right I'm going to have a go at, at using varnish to create like a tidal mark so you can see we've just um, put some tape down and I'm just watering down this varnish, so this is Vallejo Gloss Acrylic Varnish because um, we've just put uh, enamel wash down when I say just several hours ago now I want this quite watery really so I'm thinning it to make sure we get no brush strokes or anything like that visible in it And with any varnish, the more layers you put on, the glossier it becomes. I'm not worried too much about a dead straight edge because what we're going to do when this is dry, we're going to take it off and put another edge on. I can now just flip that round and just do top and lightly to just put one coat on the top. So it just seals everything in. And it's also going to just deepen the colour a little bit. Right. Just make 
making sure I've got nothing collected. There we go. So that looks good to me. So we'll just let that uh, that dry off and I'll do the other float in exactly the same way and I'll come back to you when we're ready to put a second line on. Moment of truth now. We've um, done the varnishing on both of them and what I've done is I've put the masking tape back on this time. It is... Um, going over what the line that we've already varnished to. So this line is higher up than the first line we put on. So hopefully when we do this, because we're putting a second coat on, it'll be glossier and the one underneath will be more satin. So we'll have these three steps and that'll, that'll show sort of like a, a waterline mark is the plan. So... And then we can give this a second coat. Sure, I've not missed any areas. There we go. So there'll be no brush marks in there, as you can see. Okay, that completes that one side. So just peel that away very carefully. And now I've got it off, I can hold the very bottom of the float where we've not put varnish. Take it off and I can't see how well it's done until we turn it over. Yeah, there is a witness there, definitely. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, but you can see two different lines. So I'm pretty happy with that. That gives me an impression of a water line. So yeah, I'll carry on, get those done, and then we can leave them to dry. And then the next job is messing around with the struts. So we're all varnished up. Next thing is to add uh, these stanchions. Now, just for an extra bit of fun, because I've cleaned them up and painted them up, I don't know what's what, so I've got to do a bit of test fitting to work out where they all go. But I did do it before, um, so it becomes fairly obvious, I think. Right, I think I'm fairly 99.8% sure that I've got these in the right places now they're leaning correctly um, you can see I have not glued these in yet so what we have to do is turn them upside down and plop them onto there my thought process is to because there's a little bit of play in some of these parts is to put them into place so that they're loose fit then glue them into the wing and then um, the instructions have us turn it back the right way round, at which point it's standing on these and we can glue them in. So that's my thought process. Let's have a play.
Okay, that's largely gone in, easier than I expected, to be honest. Just got one to push into place. Right. Okay, we have a slight problem. I'll be able to show you in a minute what that problem is. So, in this hole here, we have two different struts going in. And this is a little bit far up, so one of the struts isn't going in properly. So what we will have to do is take some material off the end of the strut so it can just sit on there okay. Otherwise, we have a really nice fit with, with all the others. Let's get this other strut in. Fit that one in a minute. Okay, trickier than it looks. But what I'm going to do is glue this one in, then I'm not worrying about it while we deal with the other one. I'm going to just take that out. Let's take some material off that as a start point and then we should be able to uh, fit the whole thing, which would be ideal. In fact, we can probably trim, trim it down with a knife first, so... There we go. You can see the problem. Right, let's have a go at installing this now. Okay, so. There we go, that's in and sitting correctly. So I'm going to use the finer brush. Just gives me a bit more accuracy. I don't know where that came from. That's annoying. I'll have to tidy that up later. Right, I am just going to hold it there for a sec while this glue dries because the weight of the float is pulling everything out. I'll take my finger off. 
Oh, how annoying is that? So for some reason, I got a sudden shot of glue come down the brush. So that must have been trapped up inside the brush handle. That's never happened before. How annoying. And it's, uh, you might not be able to see, but it, it's peeled back some of the paint. So we'll have to scrape away and touch up. That's annoying. Okay, that is our first one in. Now, I'm going to do it slightly differently on this side because, because we've got an issue with these dropping out. I'm going to put some glue in so that, and then flip it over and set it um, because that way it, um, it will still be... Uh, something we can move around with. Now, get the right ones in. And that one goes in there. And it should, hopefully, just stop them falling out while we turn upside down, which was the problem I was having before. Right, this one is being much more difficult than the other one. There we go, got it in. Right, we will let that dry, um, flip it over and then reinforce it all. We do have some rigging to do as well and I think we might be better trying to get some of that rigging done while we're here and before we're putting more spars on. So I'm going to leave that to dry um, and then and have a think about what my next step is because um, there's more spars to go on and they want you to turn turn everything the right way up um, but then later on we've got a load of rigging to do so you can see there's quite a bit of rigging to do on there I think we should put the other spars on first actually just in case some of the connection points are on those spars so yeah let's do that so we've got we're at this point here We've got that to do next, and then those spars to do, and hopefully be a bit more rigid. We can check all the gluing, flip it back over, do the rigging, tidy that up, and then we're ready for putting the fuselage in. We're nearly done. We're getting there. Right, let's get her on her feet. I hadn't um, taken in how much these jut forward of the uh, of the wings so get my sponge block out of the way um, and have to remember that I didn't glue in one of the, the sets of um, stanchions so there we are that is looking big is what it's looking Right, now we've got her the right way round, we've got these large struts to put in. So one of them connects into the back here where we've got two struts already in the back of the uh, float. And then this point connects uh, right up against the um, engine uh, covers. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, 
Uh, I don't think that. There we go. Yeah. Good job I hadn't glued those ones in, isn't it? It's a very, very tight fit. And in fact, I think my uh, paint is hindering the fit a little bit here, so. Just gonna take that down a little bit. Okay, let's have another go. I'm worried about breaking the part because it's very, very thin there. Um, but it's not happy. I'm going to take this little nut off, pin it down a little bit. Let's try it now. Oh, that's much better. Uh, that slots in nicely now. Right, but there's also another strut that comes from this point here where these struts are attaching. So you can see on the instructions there, that's the strut we've just put in. And then from that point we have another strut that comes up to this point here. So before I do any gluing, Let's have a look at these struts um, and then um, I have a strut at the front which we didn't put in earlier uh, which is this one here um, so let's uh, have a look at that so this is the front strut and that's the other front strut, I believe. So these are the rear struts. Yep. So I'll just move that out of the way. And there is one which appears to have steps on. So I'm guessing this is how the pilots got up to the fuselage as it's so far up. Hmm. These struts are difficult to attach but do not need to be assembled now is what it says. I'm not quite sure how they go together. I think, I think they're going underneath that. I need to have a look underneath that. It would have been helpful if Wing Up Wings had blown that up so you could see what was happening a little better. Because there's a, a peg on it. And then you've got this funny shape, but it does say to put it in last. <laughs> you can hardly see. When they say it's fiddly, what they mean is this is virtually impossible and then there's some demonic laughing that follows. <laughs> right, where's my magnifying glasses? If I could get the uh, get the thing to fit at the bottom, it would be uh, 
helpful, but I'm nowhere near. Again, it's a bit tight and that could be paint again, so just going to whip the paint off. And there might be a little bit of seam there I've missed, so that won't help. Right, let's try again. Pie. Right, I understand that now. So I assumed that this one was on this side because of the, the ladders, but apparently not. Right, you oh, see that fits like a dream when you put it on the right side. Right, now I understand why this fits second. Right, okay, so we push that in. Again, I'm having a little bit of a fit issue there. So let me just take the paint off. Tolerances are so tight on this, which is a testament to good engineering, um, but they've not made allowances for paint. Not that you want paint on these parts, you're going to bond them. So I would argue that Wingnut Wings knew what they were doing better than I do. Right, so plop that in at the bottom, plop that in at the top. Right, that's correct. Pop that in and actually they're not that fiddly when you've got them cleaned up and aligned and on the right side it makes all the difference. Right, I'm going to glue that one in now before it moves or pops out or something so... Put some extra thin down there at the bottom. We haven't glued the bottom ones in anyway, so that needed to be done. Right, that's that in. And I've just got my belt and braces this because I can't remember fully um, how much glue we put in, so it won't do any harm. So we've glued that one in at the bottom. And we'll plop it in there. I'm just going to put some in the uh, opening there there we go. it's actually two different shaped holes one's rectangular one's square and I hadn't noticed that sorry if I'm getting in your way um, but it's more important that I see than you do right now. No doubt when we put the fuselage in, it'll line itself up. So, because there's a bit of flex in it. So we'll leave it as that. So that gets me to the end of step eight. Step nine. Um, what you do is you get your magic wand and you wave it and your fuselage appears. 
Right, we need to revisit the fuselage because we've not done everything we need to do with it. Um, Cause we have not put the glazing in and we have not put the decals on. So while this is drying, we can get back to the fuselage. Decals for the fuselage. You've got to fish around a little bit in these instructions. I've got to say, lots of people rave about Wingnut Wings instructions. I find them not the best, actually. Uh, you do have to fish around. So we've got an, an image here which has got um, decals there and there mentioned and decal there mentioned. Then you have to fast forward... To, oh, that's the page that's come off. To that page for uh, for checking the top and the bottom, but uh, there doesn't appear to be any decals on there. And then you have to uh, notice that, there you go, on this page, page seven, there's decals being called out there and there some of which have already just been called out in the colour instructions, some of which that haven't. So there's some on page 17 and some on page 7. So you're backwards and forwards. So that's not, you know, that's counterintuitive, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I have got them all cut out now. I'm just wondering where this big one goes. I, I know it goes somewhere, uh, but I can't find it. And that's the problem. I'm all over the place looking for these um, these decal instructions. Nope, can't see where that goes. No reference to it at all. Right, strange. Okay, we're going to do the decals first. So I'm going to put what I've got left back in the bag and away. Um, so we'll put these decals on and then we've got the uh, transparent uh, parts to put on. Uh, more than you'd think, we've got um, two on each side and then three underneath. So quite a few clear parts, and then they're going to need painting in. Um, so let's get ourselves set up. And I'm doing them in a specific order, and we'll do all of this side, and then we'll we'll flip it on and do the other side. I'm actually going to separate this page and then fold it so I can see all of my deco instructions at the same time now. There we go, that's helpful. As they're all going on flat surfaces, we're going to go um, with the micro set. Um, because these are um, cartograph, I don't put any softening down first because it immediately starts to soften them and they, they can rip because they're quite thin anyway. Um, the decal that goes around this hole, obviously we've already got rigging coming out. So what I've done is I've just um, cut through the top of the decal um, so that we can whip it round there, the thread there. Right, let's see how we're doing with this one. Nearly there, so I'll just leave that out and we can put the next one in. 
there we go so this is going over there like that Okay, get our second one out and put our third one in. So next one goes over there and then we've got one going around the back end of there. Um, and then we'll do the big number and these two holes and, and that is pretty much it. My next job is the clear parts. We've got a small number of uh, clear parts. They're really beautiful parts. They've got, um, you can see creases in in it where it's, you know, it's some form of flexible material that they've used for, um, you know, it's not hard perspex or anything like that. So quite what it is, uh, I don't know, but you can see the little, um, tension lines in it and stuff. It's really, really nice. Now they've all got, edges um, so my plan is to paint all the parts separately before we install them so paint the paint the frames up um, then tidy up the edges so the clear parts are still nice and clear it doesn't need masking they're all different colors uh, depending on where they're going as well so we'll we'll do all of that um, and this is the main uh, windscreen. Uh, this one is quite softly molded, so uh, whether I can get away with painting it without masking it, I don't know, but I'm going to have a go, um, and then we can install all of those in the fuselage. Okay, paint is drying on my window frames um, before I can install the windows, and I've got two lots of painting to do, so um, on this one it's nice and easy because we're just painting in the uh, aluminium, but on some of the other frames I, I, I need like aluminium bolt heads and then a dark wood or the um, green that we've used um, on the fuselage around the frame. So um, I painted those aluminium as well and we're just waiting for them to dry so we can then do the next stages. So uh, I'm now putting my attention on rigging all of this, uh, the, the floats. Um, I hadn't appreciated until I've come to look at the rigging that we've actually got some anchor points to go here. Um, so um, I need to think about what I'm doing with that. I'm probably going to drill some holes in in a second. Now, on the bottom of the struts, there is little depressions which uh, mark out your anchor points. And I just want to drill them um, through a little bit. In fact, I'll show you what these anchor points look like so you've got an idea uh, of what it is that we're talking about. So we just need to drill them out um, a little bit deeper to accept the eyes that I want to glue in place before we can rig. Uh, 
and you have to study the rigging plans really carefully in fact the rigging plans aren't that great I'm I'm somewhat disappointed with the quality of the rigging plans but if you look here you can see this blue um, line goes to there and then it goes to there and you'd be mistaken to think that that's one line goes to one terminus point and then comes that way it's two so those two are both separate lines and they're next to each other which you can work out looking at the model but it's not explicitly clear on here right same process as before with the uh rigging guys um they need to be the, the bob's buckle ones just as a reminder um, the brilliant product absolutely cannot recommend it enough I'm using an old pair of sprue cutters to reduce the length um, and then we're gonna fix them with some CA um, and put them into the location points that we just drilled out now some sometimes you have to think about the direction you have to think about how easy it's going to be to thread them um, and that sort of stuff uh, sometimes you want them standing straight up sometimes you want to lean them over a little bit um, these ones these end termination points uh, I want to lean them over a little bit um, although the direction will be fine when you put the um, uh, fishing line through it just aesthetically is going to be a bit more pleasing so uh, once again I'm using uh, a medium CA because it's got some depth filling properties and the like so there we go you can see how that is sort of angled leaning towards the, uh, the uh, termination point which is going to be up here and then we've got another one that's going to go from there. So I need to get some. Uh, I've already got some in. It's just these end ones that I'd missed. Um, and then we need to put the new ones into into here. Um, where we've only just built that up so we couldn't do those before. Um, and I actually want those ones to be a little bit shorter. because they do stick directly out. It is fiddly this job. That's one in. Right. So I'm going to carry on putting the uh, um, eye bolts in and then when we've done that I'll come back to you um, and we can have a look at um, getting this lot all rigged up. Hopefully I'll be able to show you a little bit more clearly my process of rigging than I have been able to before. Um, we'll try and zoom you in a little bit and, and see that process um, it, but it is so simple and so authentic. Right, I'm going to show you, um, try and show you a bit more close up how I'm going to do this rigging um, using fishing wire. So we've installed our eye bolts, just a reminder, these come from Bob's Buckles. And uh, the next thing we want to do is to get some uh, line on there. Now the line is a red colour and we want it black. We will colour it in with a Sharpie pen later, but right now we don't need to do that. Um, and I'll explain why in a minute. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find my scissors. Um, so we're gonna cut um, a length that we know is much longer than we need. So we've got plenty of uh, wriggle room. So I need that, I put in that, and we'll trim that. Okay. So first thing we need to do is just thread the eye bolt with our uh, fishing cable. So um, this shouldn't be too big a task. And once you've got it passed through, just make sure you uh, 
get a good length all the way through so it doesn't fall back through. Uh, the fishing line that I'm using here is 0.12 millimeter. So you need to make sure that your eye is bigger than that. Um, and so the next thing we want to do is actually put one of our little brass tubes on. So this is the uh, next um, step, putting the little brass tube on. Uh, While well, I'm using brass, you can get silver ones as well, or whatever colour you want. Some people paint them, I don't. Uh, getting this on is not too bad. The, the trick is to hold your fishing wire as close to the end as possible. There you go, that's that's in. And it's always worth taking a very fine drill bit and running through uh, just to make sure there's no burrs uh, making it difficult because we now have to get a second line through and that is the more difficult bit. So again, same process, holding the line as close to the end as possible. Well, I made that look easy, but... <laughs> It quite often isn't that easy, I can assure you. We'll just pull that through a little bit. And then what we want to do is pull the other line, the line that we put through first, so that we uh, get that tube down. Um, and then we want to close the loop. Like so. So we've got that right to the end now. Uh, so the next thing to do is just seal that um, and we're going to do that with a little bit of CA. So right at the closure there where the, where the, uh, the tube ends. So we're sealing the tube end and we're sealing the two bits of uh, fishing line together. If you blow on CA that just speeds up your uh, curing time uh, and that's essentially on so what we can do now is go in with our scissors and trim off the excess line down to where we super glued making sure we don't accidentally cut off the whole both of the lines and have to start again there we go That's really nice. So that's our first rigging line in. So next thing to do is to uh, get this through the appropriate um, eye. I'm just checking which eye I want that to go through. Yeah, so it's the inner one. So when you put your eye in, you want to make sure that you've orientated it so it's easy to thread. It doesn't really matter which direction. Uh, I guess, strictly speaking, they should all be in, in line facing uh, forward and back um, so that the eyes are, are, are that way, but it doesn't massively make a difference. And um, Once you've got the rigging line on, you can't really tell. So, um, right, with that... Um, done we can now thread the other end of the rigging line now what I usually do is I um, color these the, the line in with a sharpie once that's dry just to check that this is taut because as you go up and down it with your felt pen you're putting some tension on it um, but um, because I'm just showing you how we do it I can do that in later afterwards so we put the second tube on, let that drop down, and, and thread it through our eye. Now I don't worry too much about eye direction, some people do, it's a personal preference. Uh, I guess it looks um, better if they're all running in the same direction, but it's hardly noticeable once it's rigged up. Right, so we're then back to two lots of tweezers. And again, same rule as before, 
hold your line as close to the end as you can so that it's steady and then I'm bringing up the tube to the line and like I say this is the most difficult bit it's the bit that sometimes can be time consuming I'm sort of glad that it's not going in easily because there we go we've got it uh, I wanted to show you that it can be a little bit tricky right so we've got that threaded through now and what we want to do is to get the um, line as taut as possible so the short end the end we've just passed through is the end that we want to pull there we go then what you want to do is before you tighten it is just bring it taut There we go. I was pulling on the wrong end. So that's nice and taut now, as I want it. And then if you pull on the short end, you can see how we've now got that nice and taut and you can just take your tube up to the top there. Don't take it right the way up to the top because you want to just do a second tightening. Push it up to the top and then apply your... Uh, C8. And there you go, that is that rigging line on. And then with a pair of scissors, we can go in and trim the excess off. And then like I say, you're just simply colouring in with a black Sharpie. Um, and that's it. That's all there is to uh, doing really nice looking aircraft rigging. It's better than Easy Line. It's less fiddly than Easy Line. It's quicker than Easy Line and looks more authentic. <laughs>